describing a family member in literary nonfiction. There are, of course, hundreds of ways to describe a family member. Um, to describe anybody, really, I'm just going to focus on family members because the subject matter of our class is memoir, of course. There are hundreds of ways to describe a family member. Um, I'm just going to mention some that I've found successful. Um, hopefully these will be helpful as, as a guide just to get you to think about your own way um, to describe a family member. Now let me begin by making a distinction that I think is really important. A distinction between description and characterization. Think of description as what you would tell the police if you were describing someone. Raw facts, height, weight, hair color, eye color, nose shape, mouth shape, so on and so forth. Now, of course, this data is essential for describing your family member. But as a writer of literary nonfiction, you're not there simply to give a, let's call it, scientific description, a police blotter description of your family member. You're there to reveal a kind of essence of your family member. What makes this family member that person and no other person at all? And when you start moving into that area, you're practicing what I call characterization, which means you're basically treating your family member as if he or she, um, they, is a character in a novel. But of course, you have actual material to draw from. You're not simply making matter up. Well, I think the, the first technique I would suggest in describing a family member is this. Go ahead and make that police blotter. Go ahead and list all the adjectives that describe your family member. That will just get you thinking about that person. But then ask yourself, what is the, the, the one physical characteristic or the one gesture that you think expresses that family member the most uniquely, the most intensely, the, the, in, 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 in the richest way possible? I call this a radiant node. <laughs> Fancy. But I, that, that one particular, maybe there's a gesture. Um, may, maybe there's a nervous tick. Maybe there's the way the person holds a cigarette or a glass. Uh, maybe the person has one eye, one color, one eye, another color. Maybe the person has uh, gnarled fingers. Uh, maybe the person has ears that are too small. Just any any gesture or trait that is unprecedented, let's say, um, unrepeatable, let's say. And you can use that particular gesture or physical characteristic almost like, like think of it not as a radiant node so much as a magnet. And it draws all the other characteristics of that person toward it like the magnet would draw iron filings. So another way to characterize a family member would, of course, this is obvious, use figurative language. Uh, instead of saying, oh, um, my mother's eyes are brown, or my mother's eyes are very brown, or my mother's eyes are light brown, why not think, well, what do they look like? Do they look like mud? Uh, do they look like sand? Do they look like clay? That's kind of grayish. What do they look like? And start thinking along those terms so you can start setting up metaphors or similes. Think of Emily Dickinson. In one of her letters, she says... Um, she doesn't say my eyes are a certain color of brown. She goes, my eyes are like the sherry la left in the glass after the guests have left. Like the sherry left in the glass after the guests have left. Whoa, that's so striking. That's such a specific color. But not only is it a specific color, but also there's an emotional element to it because it's, it's a glass that's been left behind. So we get a specific view of how her eyes look, but also there's an emotional level to that as well. Um, Another, I think, um, important way to characterize is instead of describing how the character is, describe what the character does. Uh, this, this ties into the whole radiant node bit uh, uh, somewhat. But, but I mean, you can, you can really describe a, a character through action. So it, I could say, oh, my, my, my brother is 5'5 five five and, and doesn't like feeling like he's short. I can say that. Or I can say, um, every time I see him... Uh, he, he hoists his shoulders up as high as he can 
and it's almost as if he's standing on his tiptoes. Or I could say he wears shoes with high heels, and when he walks, I can hear them clacking over the floor. Things like that. Those, those actions reveal an inner character um, in a much more vivid, compelling way than my just telling you um, that my brother is short and doesn't like being short. Another way to reveal character, dialogue. Does your um, family member have a certain thing he or she they like to say? Uh, you might remember that in um, Charles D'Ambrosio's piece about his father, he says, my father always likes to say when we're having cake, this is living. This is living, isn't it, son? So that, that dialogue tells us something about how his father relates to the son, how he relates to the decadence of eating cake. Um, so I would say any verbal habit of your family member is definitely something you should consider in revealing um, the character. Other ways. How do others see this character? Uh, you, you don't really have to describe a character at all. You could describe how the people around that character react to that character. So if you're thinking about a family reunion, maybe, instead of describing your dad, uh, what does your cousin say to your dad? Uh, why is it that your Uncle Howard looks down when he talks to your dad? Why is it that um, Aunt Linda won't even talk to your dad at all? So you can create a, a sort of panorama of perspectives around the character that could reveal parts of the character that a straight-on description might not. So we would call that characterization through indirectness. Another way to characterize a family member, I would say, is focus on what that person sees. If you think of Paisley Rechdahl's essay, The Night um, My Mother Met Bruce Lee, we don't get many details at all about um, Rechdahl's mother um, working in a Chinese restaurant. We do see her fingernails and how they're cracked, and we see how they're greasy. But we more get to know about her through what she looks at. She keeps looking at the swinging door to the kitchen. What's that about? Um, we also learn about her through what she hears. Um, she hears dialogue from the kitchen. So instead of us seeing the mother in her physicality, we come to understand her through what she looks at and what she listens to. So these are just some helpful tips, I think, um, for moving from description to characterization. Uh, obviously, you can find your own techniques, and there are many others beyond what I've mentioned. Uh, but the best way to learn to characterize a person well is simply to do it as much as possible, to practice at it, to let others look at your work, um, and you will become brilliant at it, I have no doubt, in no time. I'm out.